Hello. Uh, thanks for coming. Um, so, uh, first off, my name is Mikolai Radvan, as I just said. Um, I'm a senior game programmer at Techland. Um, we're working on, uh, I'm, I'm in Warsaw, we're working on our uh, own IP, um, and I have some thoughts uh, that I wanted to share with you. There's a bit of a problem here because um, I need to give you a bit of context, but also I can't tell you anything, uh, which is going to be a bit problem problematic, but thankfully I have some pictures and hopefully we'll get through this. Um, right, uh, we'll have maybe some time for, uh, for, quest for questions at the end, uh, but we may not, we'll see. Um, if we don't, uh, please come to uh, the Techland booth, which is on the first first floor. First floor, yes. Um, and uh, I'll be there after this talk, and and uh, we can have a conversation. And if you have any quick questions, just if you don't understand something like a, a line of code because it's I don't know C plus plus seventeen, and you're not that comfortable, just ask if you have quick questions. Okay. So let's get on with it. Um, so the, the title that you saw, I, I was trying to be to be a bit clever with it, maybe it doesn't tell much about what this talk is actually about. So this is the actual uh, title of the talk. Um, I'm, I'm trying to explore uh, what, how can we use uh, C++ core features um, to just make a life um, as, as programmers a bit easier. easier. Um, so the, the, the biggest subject that I'm relying on is the fact that C++ is a, a strongly typed language. And uh, most of you probably know what this means, but sometimes with these things that everybody knows, it's, it's hard to uh, maybe define what it actually means. Uh, so, so what it actually means is um, you can define types, um, you can define a number type and a string type, and then if you define a function that takes um, numbers as, as uh, parameters, um, if you use it and pass um, the type that, that is in the signature, um, it's going to compile and everything's going to be fine because these types are the same. Um, and if you don't, then it won't because these types don't match and the compiler will tell you that uh, you can't convert uh, the, the, the provided um, argument uh, to the wanted parameter type. Um, and uh, I guess the, 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 the most important thing um, about this is the fact that, that it won't compile. It won't crash uh, at runtime. You're, you're going to try to compile the file and it will just immediately tell you this won't work, which is kind of great uh, because this means this is checking that is for free. Um, and, and when I say free, obviously I lie because nothing is for free. Um, compile time is going to be longer and, um, well, essentially that's it. Um, you're going to pay in compilation time, but what mainly bothers us probably is, is runtime is FPS and that's not going to hurt uh, with, with any number of types. Um, it's always checked, and, and what I mean by this is that even if you have a thousand branches, if else branches, uh, if the code gets into the executable, meaning that it's not if deft, um, then it's going to pass through um, checking the types, um, always. Uh, that's the thing that's not going to happen is you're not going to run your game on E3 and it's going to crash because this was the one time that it ran at the wrong day, wrong hour, wrong whatever, and now it crashes. Um, and also, I, I think uh, that they help um, readability a lot. Um, so. Um, what I mean by this is if you have a cosine function and you pass the number 3 to it, it doesn't really tell much. It's really hard to tell what the 3 is. 
I mean, you all probably know this is radiance because this is STD, and and you know STD. You know STD uses radiance for angles, right? But what if it's it's your built-in function? Then then it's a bit of a problem because, well, who knows? Might be degrees, might might be radians. Um, so maybe you can take a look at the signature of the function. Maybe the programmer left a nice name for the for the parameter that tells you uh, what kind of an angle uh, the function expects. Nice. Maybe they left uh, some documentation. Um, or maybe that there's a company-wide convention that we always use degrees or we always use radians. But the problem with convention is, of course, that that uh, one, we never follow it because there's a, there's a new guy or a new gal in the company and, and they don't know that there's a convention or maybe they forgot um, or I don't know, maybe they were drunk or whatever then, and, and, it, and then it's broken. And, and then another problem is that things change and it's hard to, f to, to remember to update everything. It's very often that I see that, that a function does something, I look in, a, in the code, a function does something and then I take a look at the documentation and it says that, that the function does something completely different. Maybe, and the worst thing is when the documentation is actually there, because when it's not there, then you know to take a look at the at the code. But when it's there, you expect it to be right, and might not be the case. Um, so I think this, um, mm, what I'm trying to say is that leaving the context of of what data is uh, in the code uh, or in the programmer's head um, is is not enough. It's risky. Um, if only the programmer knows uh, what they wrote, that's a big problem. If they left some uh, some data in the in the code that tells that tells what what the data is, uh, like like documentation or good names, etc. That's better, but that's still not great. The, the, the good thing is that we can use the compiler to, uh, to, to keep this data. And I'm trying to explore how we can actually use it. So the first, um, uh, the first example I wanted to show you is probably uh, a, bit, um, a bit obvious. Uh, it, it's, it's a solution to the angle problem that, that I've shown you. So instead of just um, giving three, using a float, which really says nothing about the data type, we can create a class, call it angle, hide the fact that it uses radians uh, as a private fact. You can change it afterwards, it doesn't matter. Uh, provide two constructors. If you want to initialize it with degrees, fine. Initialize it with, with degrees. If you want to initialize it with radians, fine. Your call. Um, and a means to retrieve the numerical value, which is, of course, necessary. Um, <clears throat> sorry. Um, so the original situation was this. Um, we had just a number, and we had a variable that, that held some data, but, but the data was float. Could be anything, right? Um, the situation that we have right now uh, is, well, you see, we create an angle, um, an instance of the angle class, um, tell the compiler that we're, we're using degrees, and afterwards, everything is completely safe. We, we pass it to the cosine function, we pass it, uh, we get it from the arc cosine function, um, and it doesn't matter whether you use degrees, radians, doesn't matter, you don't, just don't have to worry about it. Um, and then it's safe until you retrieve it, because then it's a float again, and, and again, who knows what this is. Well, after a while, obviously, in this line, I guess you probably know. Right, so when the compiler has the context about what the data, what, what the data actually is, uh, we can tell it what can be done with the type, what makes sense, and what doesn't. Uh, so we can allow only these arithmetic operations that make sense. Uh, for instance, for angles, um, addition makes sense. It, 
makes sense to say 45 degrees plus 20 degrees. Um, it doesn't make sense to say 20 degrees plus 2, because this means nothing. So let's just not provide a function that adds, that adds a flow to, to the angle. Um, similarly, or rather differently, <laughs> multiplication by scalar makes sense, but multiplying two angles doesn't make sense. So let's not provide uh, the means to, to, to multiply then. And if you make a mistake, and if you multiply them, you're going to get a comp compilation error. And you're just not going to make that mistake. Well, and if you make it, you're going to fix it quickly. <clears throat> also, you can do nice stuff like, for instance, not worry about the thing that, that checking for floating point equality doesn't, <clears throat> doesn't really work that well. Uh, and you can set an epsilon value that it will che check for difference. Um, which is nice, I guess. So, um, also C++11 gave us uh, user-defined literals. That's, I, I would say, icing on the, on the cake. And we can just create nicer uh, functions that will create uh, instances of the angle class, just like that. And then create uh, angles by, by just saying 42 underscore deg. That's, I think, very neat and looks very built in. So, and make everything const expert because it's cool. You, you can, you don't have to, but it's nice. Um, so what these changes do is they bring the context of the data to the level of the compiler. I kind of like to think like we're leveling up here. Um, right, so at the beginning I told you it was free. Um, so, so how free actually is it? Um, obviously, um, debug uh, debug versions will probably run a bit slower than uh, than your normal than 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 if you used floats, uh, which is not great. Uh, but also, it's not that bad. It's not it's not that much slower. But I checked on the I. I ran benchmarks because I didn't want to lie to you, and it was slower. However, release versions, which we probably care most about, are essentially the same. The, the optimizer optimizes out uh, all the extra code uh, that you've added and, um, and just, just uses uh, the data the same way as if it were just a float. Uh, so for release, it is free. Um, and then compilation times are obviously uh, longer. Um, I tried to benchmark how much longer, and that's a question to you guys that, that you can maybe answer me afterwards, because I don't really know how to do this. Um, the problem is I, I tried to run, um, to create a set of um, generated files that would use uh, my angle class and, uh, and then compile all of them and see uh, how much slower they run uh, with uh, angles instead of floats. And I got some data. It looks nice, but I don't really know how valid this is because I, I'm not sure how much it's caused by the fact that the, the, just the file is bigger and how much for the fact that there's actually a new class at, and so on and so forth. So uh, if you have an idea, you can come to the Techland boot uh, afterwards and tell me, and maybe then I'll update, update the presentation. Um, okay, uh, so, so the, angle, the angle class is, I would say, a bit trivial. Um, it's neat, but it's pretty trivial. Um, and I would like to show you something more complicated, something that really, I think, improves readability and, um, and makes the code much safer, uh, and is also kind of clever. Uh, this example is taken from uh, Bjarne Strostrup's uh, article called Type Rich Programming, um, and I um, suggest that maybe if you're interested in the topic, you can read it. Uh, the, the example he gives is a bit uh, bigger. Um, and uh, what he does is, is um, he tries to introduce a class that, that makes the usage of uh, physical values safer. Um, so for physical properties, you have uh, many uh, dimensions. 
Uh, we're going to use just distance, mass, and time because I think uh, this is enough for, for game dev. We don't really uh, need, I don't know, energy or, or, or current, etc. But but if you need it, then you can just add it in. Um, these uh, these dimensions uh, are also um, can be raised. Uh, to a power, yes. Yeah? So, for instance, if you have distance, distance squared is is area, distance cubed is volume, and so on and so forth. Um, they they work with with each other. So you can divide uh, units uh, or values in some units by values in other units. Uh, so, for instance, you'll have distance over time over time, which is acceleration. Um, so writing a value class similar to the to the angle class that I've just shown you would mean you'd have to type a lot, and um, it's probably it would be hard to cover all the all the possibilities. Um, and even if you did, that that would be a horrible amount of code that you'd just have to type and and, and probably also make mistakes. Um, but thankfully we have uh, we have templates, um, and the thing that we're aiming for. Uh, is uh, is this? If we have a distance value in meters and we multiply it by by another distance value, this should work obviously, and this should yield uh, a value in meters squared, uh, which is uh, area. Uh, if we div divide distance uh, by time, we would like to have um, of the, the value of speed, um, and so on. If, if we multiply kilograms by by a value of acceleration, we should get a, a value of force. Um, so we would like to be able to, convent, uh, to conveniently create variables storing uh, values of these physical properties, like this. This is what what essentially what we're aiming for. Um, we have two distances, we multiply them, we get an area, and then if you check the type that is, uh, that is held there, uh, you get a value in, um, in the unit that you wanted. Also combining the, the more complicated ones uh, should work, as I said, dividing should yield correct results. Um, so the, the trick that, that uh, Bjarne does that makes uh, the implementation of, of this in a, in a template very convenient and very easy and quite elegant is the fact that, that, that you can just use the exponents of these units that we use. Uh, so instead of, of, of writing this the way that I did before, we can type it in like this and uh, we'll see that we have the, the, the type of mass is a value in kilograms once, meters zero times, and seconds zero times. Acceleration would, would have meters in the uh, numerator and seconds squared in the denument, denumerator. I'm, I can't say this word. Um, so this is minus two, essentially, the, 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 the exponent. Uh, we can, so we can define a unit class uh, as a template that is parameterized by these three exponents. Um, this is the, the template definition. And we can define aliases uh, that, that um, have the exponent values correct, just as, I, uh, just as I've shown you, but in the template, um, in the template version. The value class that we're going to use, that is the, um, uh, the same thing that we had uh, the angle class do, will be parameterized by the unit. Uh, and similarly to the angle class, uh, we want the user to be forced to specify the used unit when in initializing it and when retrieving the, the value. So whenever they use a float uh, to set the value or whenever they want to get a float to, to, to learn the value, uh, they'll have to say what unit they have in mind. And uh, this will hopefully um, save us from mistakes and make the compiler do the, uh, do, do the actual uh, hard work. 
So this is our value class. Uh, this is the uh, this is the constructor. We just uh, theoretically we could not um, pass the, the the unit parameter, uh, but as I said, we want the user to be forced to do it uh, so that they don't make a mistake. And also for another reason that I will tell you in a, in in a second. Um, and they to retrieve it, they have to specify the the the, the wanted unit. Um, so, so for for brevity and to not show you just uh, pages and pages of code, I'm not listing uh, all that this class could do. Um, but I think a very elegant thing that um, that this class can also do is because we have a separate unit class um, that that knows what dimension it works in. We can also put in. Um, ratios in there to make it possible to specify mass in uh, kilograms, grams, pounds, I don't know, ounces, whatever you want. Um, and then this value class would be transparent in terms of uh, what unit was used to initialize it. The only thing that's important is the fact that it, it holds uh, mass or force or speed. Uh, or whatever. It's not important whether the, the, the person that typed in the literal uh, typed it in meters or kilometers uh, or, or millimeters. Um, and if we do this, then it's uh, absolutely uh, necessary to, to provide the, uh, the unit to the constructor so that it's um, visible the same way as we did with angles. Make sure that the, uh, the programmer, whenever they use a number, says what the number stands for. Uh, same way, as, same way as, as the angle class I've shown you, uh, sh I've shown you before, this should, um, all, all the code that you write for this should uh, be easily optimized out by the compiler and essentially you should get uh, assembly that would be the same assembly you would get if using floats, but with uh, type checking. Um, and this is another chart of compilation times, which are obviously a bit slower. And as I said, I'm not sure that they're, they're that good. Okay, so now to the exciting part, hopefully. Um, the, the thing that we have right now is, I guess, illustrates the idea very well. Um, I like to think so. Um, and is, is, is quite neat. Um, but that's probably not very useful for game dev, not that useful for, ga for game dev. So what I would like to show you now uh, is an example how we try to leverage uh, the compiler's capabilities uh, and C++ type safety um, in, uh, in our project. Um, and we need a bit of context. As I said, the problem is this is covered by NDA, so I can't really give you that much context, but I'll try to. So um, what we're doing is um, we have many objects on the scene, and we have the player character. And we move the player character around by playing animations and just by, just by moving him where, where he needs to be. Um, in context of the objects on the scene, for instance, not only the objects on the scene, because of course the, the, the world, the, the camera, the whatever, there's, there's many different spaces. Um, and, uh, some data is stored in player space, some data is stored in object space, and then we need to make this data work together, so we need to convert it to, uh, to a common space. Um, it's quite messy. It's fairly complicated. Um, because the system, this system is still uh, being developed, we change our mind pretty often. So, for instance, we have some data stored in object space, um, and then we figure out that this should actually be stored in player space. Um, and then when we change this, um, it's like the system right now is something about 15,000 lines, 15, I said not 50, uh, 15,000 lines of uh, code. And it's very, very easy to get lost. 
uh, in, in especially in refactorings. Uh, so we change uh, this from object space to player space. We look at all the uses. And when we look at all the uses, it turns out that we call uh, some functions. And we decide, OK, so this function should take uh, data in a different space. So we go into this function, and we change it. And then we forget that we were in this previous function. And we get lost, uh, and we get bugs. Um, to illustrate this, we have our NDA-friendly uh, uh, player character uh, at the bottom. Uh, and I would like to thank at this point Agnieszka Bobrowska, who is sitting here, uh, uh, who uh, brought this, this character to life. I would like to see that character in a game. Um, and we have two theoretical objects. This does not uh, represent the quality or, or the content of the game we are working, we're working on right now. The W on the top stands for world. Um, right, so, so say we have uh, a transform from player space to this square space. And what we would like to do is we would like to have it in the circle space, the green one. So how do we do this? Well, it's pretty easy. Uh, we probably have, uh, well, the arrow in the top left is orange, uh, which may look yellow, but you, you'll figure out. It's OK. Uh, so, so we probably know the transforms from, uh, from square space to world and from circle space to world. So we can get the inverse transform of of uh, circle to world, and by multiplying these together, get the get the green transform. This is this is fairly easy, and we do this every day. But it's also very easy to uh, to forget something, like to forget to invert that last matrix, for instance, or maybe to invert it twice because you forget you forgot that you actually already passed an inverted ma uh, matrix. So it's, it's, it's fairly easy to, uh, to make a mistake here, especially when, when this data goes through a pipeline of, of many functions. Um, so what we're trying to do is to use the type system to make the compiler know what a space is. Probably the, 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 the most obvious way to, uh, to put it down would just be to have an enum and list uh, all the possible spaces that we have. And then add the data about the space that the um, thing is in to the thing. So make vector a template that takes an argument of that that is the space that the vector is in. Similarly, the point, a point. And the X form would uh, take two parameters. That would be the source space and the target space. Um, having separate vector and point classes allows us, again, to limit the use of the data um, to just the operations that make sense, which I think is, is quite uh, convenient. Uh, so for instance, adding two vectors yields a vector. Subtracting a vector from a vector also gives a vector, but subtracting a point from a point yields a vector, not a point. Or adding a um, vector to a point yields a point. Um, we will not define addition of points, for instance, because it doesn't make sense. So you won't make the mistake of, of, of adding two points. Most importantly, though, we can now track uh, we can keep track of the space everything is in. Um, so the, the X form class would probably have some function that transforms uh, a point or a vector. Uh, and it would only accept a point in the space that is the source space of, of the transform. And it yields a point um, that is in the target space. Um, Similarly for the vector, uh, for, for functions uh, that, um, that 
work on, like for instance, concatenate transforms, uh, we would also like to make sure that the target space of the one on the left is the same one as the source space of the one on the right. And we can do this in uh, at compile time, uh, which is great, I think. Um, just like that. Also, I think uh, that that having separate functions that uh, do these operations um, is is good because we lose the problem of, for instance, what is the the correct order of multiplying these matrices. Uh, if you see the use of this function saying in sequence matrix A, ma matrix B, it's obvious that it's going to be first the matrix A, then the mat matrix B, um, one after the other. And if you see these multiplied, if you see M1 times M2 times, M times M3, you don't really know what space it's in because it could be from right to left, it could be from left to right, depending on uh, how your matrix code works. And if you have a function that does it, it uh, makes it very, uh, very obvious. So keeping uh, spaces um, in an XForm template took us from having the co context only in code. And we really tried hard to, 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 to make sure that uh, it's visible uh, what spaces we work in. Uh, we tried different naming conventions. Uh, we tried adding documentation wherever necessary. But this made the, the names of everything super long, super hard to understand. And also, it wasn't really that safe because once we changed our mind about something, we maybe forgot to update some name and then we had a very good name that documented very well uh, what what's there, what we think is there, but it's not that thing anymore. Um, and now having this data um, made the compiler do the checking for us. And now maybe we can sometimes screw up and have a bad name, uh, but the, the, the code will still be correct because the compiler will check that we actually work in correct spaces. Um, this saved us uh, a lot of time uh, for debugging. And um, it's hard to stress enough uh, how, how good this feels uh, to know that, that when you compile the code, it's going to get verified and you don't, don't have to worry about stuff, about well, at least this kind of stuff, uh, that you're going to break the code. It's very easy to, um, you, you have to add something new to the system uh, and then you, you figure out, okay, so now we're going to have to change this space because this is not valid anymore. And then you, st you would start thinking normally, oh God, but now I'm going to probably break everything. So maybe let's, let, maybe let's not write this because it's just, it's going to be hell to fix this. And then we would know that implementing a feature would take a day and then fixing the bugs resulting in developing the feature would take five. And that would be horrible. So you'd never want to actually do anything that, that, that big. And now you just, uh, you just change it. You try to compile the code. It doesn't. You fix uh, you fix the, the compilation errors, and the moment it runs, it works. That is, as long as the idea you had was, uh, was valid, but then you can always change your mind. Um, the, the thing that we could build up on from, from this is we could level up to runtime. And what I mean by this is, um, while having a list of uh, spaces is maybe good enough, uh, but not all data is actually uh, available at compile time. Because for instance, when you saw this, uh, this beautiful image uh, with a circle and a square, um, these would probably be objects that were created on the scene at runtime. Um, and these would be, uh, these would both um, be object space, 
right? But we don't know which actual actu which object it actually is. So it would be nice to be able to say, okay, this transform is from object space to world space, but this is the square object space, and this is the circle object space, and um, these these objects can can pop up can pop up and can disappear. Um, so we only have the knowledge of them uh, at runtime. So the question is, how could we add it? And the idea is to, instead of having an enum of, of spaces, uh, to have types, like uh, a world space type, camera type, player type. These, these are all spaces. They may be confusing, but I wanted to um, not have space suffixes everywhere to just maybe um, make it a bit easier to read. Um, and then the default way of, of checking whether two spaces match would be just to check whether the types are the same. Um, and this would be done at compile time. But then if it were an object, uh, we could add in some extra data. Uh, we would probably like to wrap it up in some if def to make sure that, it, that, that we don't always store the data. We would like to have a version of the game that we play to just check if everything works fine and, and then to disable it to make it work uh, faster and to not use up m more space. Um, so, so the object space would uh, hold a pointer to the entity and uh, the non-checking one wouldn't. <laughs> uh, and the, the, the constructor would take the, the pointer to the entity. And the, the way we, we would check whether two object spaces match would be um, that we would check whether the entities they point to are the same. Um, so providing the space as a template parameter is not enough now because we need to have access to the data um, and there's this uh, very convenient thing in C++ uh, called empty base optimization, uh, which means that if you derive from a type that is empty, it's not going to have, um, it's not going to make the class any bigger. Uh, so if you have a class that, that has a size of four bytes, for instance, and you make it derive uh, from our uh, world space, for instance, which is empty, this is still going to be four bytes. So we're going to make uh, the, um, the objects that we have, the, the, uh, the entities, the, the vectors, points, uh, the X forms, and so on, derive from the space, but privately so that we don't, um, um, well, because this is not really valid inheritance. The XForm class is a bit trickier because it has uh, it, it has two spaces, um, and there's this uh, there's this compressed pair type that uh, you can look at uh, in Boost, for instance, uh, in Boost Hana. I think there's a compressed pair implementation, um, or you can write one on your own. It's fairly easy to screw it up, though. So maybe look at something while you do it. It's um, the idea is that uh, the compressed pair type only holds uh, the data that is not empty. And when you want to access data that is empty, it will create an instance of this empty type. And if it's non-empty, it's going to uh, hold it and return it to you. That way, the X form will only have still 16 or, or 12 floats. Uh, of size if the space is empty. And this is hopefully still free, uh, but it's also fairly easy to screw up, unfortunately. Um, I, I implemented something that you can take a look at later, uh, and I was benchmarking it, and I was surprised at one point that everything was working the same way, way as it did for floats. Uh, until I tried to apply a transform to a point, the, the, and that was twice as slow. 
Um, and it turned out I, I was making some extra copies, and um, it didn't it didn't look wrong, but the assembly was uh, was bigger and the code was much slower. So it's probably worth um, checking your benchmarks before you tell someone it's free. Obviously, compilation time is slower, uh, but I think it's worth. Uh, it's worth the time used because this is time used for something that actually um, gives us something. Um, this more complicated version of the uh, of the transform that I've shown you with uh, with runtime data we haven't checked yet, so I can't tell you how good it is, but I hope that it's going to be good and I hope we're going to see some uh, some new bugs that were hard to find uh, before. And that's it. If you have any questions, it's uh, it's good time now. Uh, if you don't have any, you can reach me on email. Uh, the code that I wrote for this presentation, the presentation itself, uh, the benchmarks, the tests uh, are on, all on my GitHub. Uh, so feel free to, to grab it and, and, and give it a go. Uh, the implementations there are not complete. Uh, I wrote them uh, with the intent of, of showing this to you and not to make this a, a library. Uh, so, so uh, but, but maybe it's going to be a base, um, base for you for, to, 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 to try something to play with it. So uh, if you like to feel free to, uh, to check it out. Um, and also, after after this, because I think we have like two minutes now for questions, so not that much. So as I said, you can you can grab me at, at the Techland booth. That would be very nice because I was given some business cards, and I never ever gave anyone a business card. So that would be very cool if someone wanted it. No questions. No Thanks. questions? Maybe. Oh. oh. <laughs> yeah, I have a sort of an off-topic question. Uh, I don't know if you know John Blow is developing a new uh, language and a compiler for it. Uh, no. Nope. You don't know about I, it? I'm not saying he's not. I'm, I don't know. All right. Then, then the question is over. OK. <laughs> <laughs> More questions? No. Oh. Yeah, hey, uh, thanks for the talk. Uh, just maybe to put it a little, uh, in a little perspective. So if I understood you correctly, you didn't attempt to do this in a whole fledged out uh, AAA production yet. It's just for, for that prototype you were working on uh, internally or? Uh, no, no, the, um, the, the, the first version of the X form that I've shown uh, that uses an enum of spaces uh, we do in our game that it's uh, that is in development. It's not used uh, like um, through in the code in all of all of the code. Just in the um, just in the, the thing that, that that the two of us uh, work on right now. Uh, but I guess this is probably. Uh, I don't want to say this is the most complicated part of of the game because for sure it's not. But it's, it's probably one that, that uses that sort of transforms uh, so much that it's really convenient for us. So it's not used throughout the code. It's used in, in our project, but we know it works and we know it her helps a lot. <laughs> oh, okay, thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Do you have some question? No. So thank Great. you. Thanks a lot. <laughs>